Hi, everybody. How are you doing today? So we're going to do a surprise today. And we've got Shanti, Steph, Julianne, Scott, and Elisa. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our gifts because right now everything's about to happen. So it's really important that you kind of think about what your gift is and think about how you can start to share it with the world. And if you don't want to share it with the world, think about how you can do use it to benefit you. Right. So anyway, or the people right around you, you know, yeah. on a small scale. So we're going to talk about some of our gifts. So my gift is to help people see the beauty in the world and also to kind of show what's coming that's going to be beautiful so i'm here to inspire you guys so that's what my gift is that i'm sharing right now so does everybody else want to tell what their own gift is or do you want me to do it yeah I'll, 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 okay you go for it I'll scott do it <laughs> well, whilst i've got time i mean who knows what <laughs> okay. i like at the moment <laughs> um yeah so i've been doing a little bit of numerology on this and um and and working always obviously some advice from yourself honey and stuff like that but like i said it's more for me it's it's really having that ability to hold space for people to really you know connect with different types of energies um and sort of you know be that bridge between different different levels of um of of people really different types of people um so it's the numerology talks about me sort of you know, helping to serve people in society and bring people together and communicate, help people communicate as well uh, and on a large collective scale. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what that could do for me in the future, what I could do and bring to society and bring to humanity in the future, which would be pretty exciting. So it'd be really good. And mm -hmm. Scott has a Telegram channel that's below as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Please subscribe. <laughs> that's cool. Good fun. Who else wants, who wants to go next? I'll go. Well, basically I've got, my gifts will be changing as time goes on, but my, um, my ability to um, not be um, afraid to, to speak my, um, my um, truth when I need to and, and not worry about what other people are thinking about it is gonna come into play with um, my inquisitive nature. And so you're only going to get the answers that you're looking for if you ask the right questions. And so that's what I've been developing and working on and so forth. But um, I do know that my, you know, my life, my, my purpose in this life or what I've been doing in my life as a, as a job and, and everything that I have done as I look back has been in preparation for this moment. So um, that's why I guess, you know, I, I'm always the one wanting to know things. I have, um, I don't pick it apart and, and, and it's my analytical nature, if you will, which actually causes me to get in my own way much of the time, <laughs> which is what I work on. But yeah, that's kind of my part in this, this particular group and for you guys. Mm -hmm. Yay. I Yay. love that. <laughs> Honey has told me that I'm going to be an alchemist or a wizard and uh, those gifts have not really come in for me yet but i do uh do light language right now and i've been doing that for about a year i didn't trust myself until more recently that i actually did it and i do think that i'm fairly intuitive i can get hits um without trying actually the, the less i try the more easier it comes to me but I am like really looking forward to this uh, alchemist job. But again, just patiently waiting for uh, some of that to click into place. Just yep. your jewelry is alchemy. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes. Yeah. And I use a lot of creativity that way. So mm -hmm. that is like alchemy. Absolutely. And I make glass beads, so I sit in a torch and create something from not mm. nothing, but simple things, you know. So yeah, yeah, love it. Um, Go for uh, it. Shandy. I'm not okay. 
<laughs> I'm not sure exactly what my gifts are, but I do know that from uh, a point in time being brought into the present, um, I've been able to, I guess, seek out the answers um, very clearly and connect the dots um, through questioning. Like that's kind of something that's come to me is like always question everything over and over and over until you have a deep knowing of what that question is. So I'll repeatedly ask the same question if I'm not quite sure. So, you know, I might end up getting four or five confirmations on one question. Um, but it's my, that skill has developed to a point where I can now just do a search online, open a book, and the answers are just there. But I think everyone can do this. And I think, I know I've been forced into having to do it sort of like eight hours a day, just mm -hmm. constantly taking in information which is evolving and it's not all about Intel. It's about, I would say that's now maybe 5% and the rest of it is, is really the connection to universe and asking those bigger questions and creating our future and all of those things. That's what's coming through now. But yeah, I think everyone can do this. Um, who knows what I'm gonna have in the future. I think maybe something to do with creating the true divine masculine feminine because people don't understand really what that is because we've been so programmed. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone wants to start understanding that, they could ring, read The Ringing Cedars of Russia because she, she teaches basically what a true state of being is, which we've all lost. Um, but yeah. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, being present is my ultimate goal. Not to worry about the future or the past, right. just to be now. Mm -hmm. Who is it that, that wrote The Ringing Cedars of Russia? Uh, I oh. can't remember his name, but it's Anas basically Anastasia created them through, okay. um, yeah, I can't remember the author's name. Well, probably I just find that in it, that will come up. That's also something else I'm um, like, with information, it will just come through me. I'm not like, I don't hold on to any information. I just, whatever I need to say at the time. So I don't remember names of films, people. It's like, literally it just comes through, yeah. which is another, another person, Walter Russell, who is alive in like the early 1920s or the early 1900s. He also explains what that is, that, you know, he doesn't see it as him. He just sees it as source speaking through him. And that's how I see it too. I don't yeah. need to hold all the information. I just, mm -hmm. you know, you, when you ask the question, the information comes to you. So it's, yeah. it's sort of going away from that academic yes. way of thinking that we've been taught to the intuitive way of thinking. Yeah which is fantastic. You sound like the perfect um, investigative reporter from what was, mm. what is, and what shall be. And, mm. and I find that very, very fascinating just because you're, you're seeking the answers and investigating from what we have been lied to about, and then you bring it to the present and you go through it and then you push yeah. it to where, you know, you think it's going into the future. I find that fascinating. It's like you're an investigative reporter on the scene constantly. <laughs> That's well, I did, I did grow up watching murder mystery. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I was always very good at figuring them out. <laughs> well, we are very fortunate to have you on the, in this team, uh, on this team. That's real. I'm telling you, that's pretty cool. We got a negotiator and we got an investigator, reporter. <laughs> we have it all. We're just, you know. Thanks. Um, let me see. As far as my gifts go, um, uh, I, I think that my gifts are bringing common sense to the table and um, bringing also humor and trying to help my brothers and sisters see the gifts that I see because we have them, we have them every day and they just get ignored, you know, uh, if you're really good at something, that's a gift, 
you know, if um, if you want to go do something, that is a gift. It's the capability of actually that free will of wanting to do it. Okay, I and mean, without that gift, you would not be able to do any of these things. And I also have the gift of seeing things. Um, I'm not really sure what they would call it. I've, I've been told maybe it's clairvoyant or something other, but it's not something that I can just go do. It's kind of like just happens to me. Now, if I'm focused on something, I can see things like if people are, are describing something to me or telling me something, it ends up as a movie in my head. Okay. I am seeing what they are describing. And sometimes it gets very, very detailed. And, uh, and I don't know how to describe it to people other than as it's coming through. Now, um, sometimes I, I can look at an object or pick up an object and I can feel a vibration out of it, you know, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but that doesn't happen too often. I, I've only had that happen to me in what I would consider actually a haunted house you know, shit, I shouldn't have been picking up. And, um, but uh, I, I, I had that happen to me and, and a house that was um, in this place is called, it was called Saluda, South Carolina. And that house was actually haunted. And it didn't matter what I touched. I kept getting these, uh, you know, terrifying feelings. And then all of a sudden I got to see, you know, that there was a ritual being done on that property before the house was ever built. So I started being very careful <laughs> about shit that I touched because <laughs> I, I didn't like the feeling that it gave me. Um, but um, I do have a way of um, helping people find their answer to their purpose and their mission and, um, and the things that they would like to do. So, I mean, that would be like a life coach and being a great, you know, dear Abby or uh, advice giver and stuff like this here. But for the most part, uh, my greatest gift so far that I have discovered all of my own is being right here with these wonderful people. And that to me is a wonderful gift because uh, I get to share in all of their abilities and help. And we help others discover their abilities and their gifts and their talents. And not just that, but to put the ego to the side so they can discover who they really are. And times are changing. And that in itself is going to force you to choose. Now, uh, and, and it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. But that in itself is going to help you find the gifts that you are holding within yourself. Okay. And, and if we can say or do or help you in any way to discover those gifts and bring them to the table to help others, because that's the whole point. You discover your gifts and then you help others. That's also a gift. Okay, so and and I'm just really proud and honored and privileged to, to be here amongst so many wonderful new friends and family. And that includes all of you out there, not just a group here. And um, and and I just wanted to share that. And I, I think that's a wonderful thing to be here. I'm really proud and honored. So thank you. Well, we're glad you're here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and you can understand my light language, too. Oh, yeah. Here recently. I've been I can't understand it, but she can. <laughs> uh, that was kind of a surprise to me because I never got into that. I was like, nah, that's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> and then I get hooked up here with uh, Stephanie. And then all of a sudden it was like, wow, I actually understand what she's saying. And uh, just a couple of other people. But yeah, I find that very fascinating because before I thought, you know, this is bullshit. I don't know. I don't know what it was. And now all of a sudden <laughs> it just comes to the surface. It's like, wow, I can really understand it. And, I, and I'm like, wow, should I trust myself? And my higher self says, yes, trust yourself. So mm. that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. you're the translator. A translator, but yeah. Also, ultimately, that's what we've all had to come to the point of is trusting ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To then help others, to, to have that strength in ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah. And what we're asking is for you just to think about what is inside of you that you can start, you know, you to trust your own inner guidance mm -hmm. and start to kind of step out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. Because right. we're, we're coming into our own right now and right. we just want to like share that with you and you guys are all part of it. So you're not self doubt is your biggest obstacle too. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. Self doubt. We are ourselves worth enemy. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, if you could see people the way I see them, sometimes it's like, you know, they have all these little sparks inside of them, you know, imagine a little, 
fire pit in the in your belly, you know, and it lets off embers and so forth. And I can see people with all these different little gifts and talents and conversations and likes and wants and desires, and they're just hovering around. And whenever they start talking to me, it kind of shoots one straight up, you know, but then there's the majority of the people who are holding it down that doesn't allow it. And, mm -hmm. and I hope that I, we be able to help people come across um, that and help them realize, you know, that they are the ones that's holding back their special gifts and talents because we've all been told that this is bullshit this is a lie this is fantasy you know none of this stuff could possibly ever be real you know and uh and so that is another thing that i hope that i can um give back to people in a type of a gift is give their confidence back to them yeah. you know um, yeah because it's it's about building those tools mm -hmm. you know using cards using divination using the pendulum talking to yourself mm -hmm universe you know all of that it's about building and then research you know you can multiple searches on something you can glean through that it's yeah so it's building those tools until you you trust and, and right. stay and being in the heart because without the intuition or the discernment yeah. you don't there's no way of seeing it so it's feeling that frequency of everything because you know, like I know instantly when the frequency of something is correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a, it's a much, it becomes a much deeper understanding than just what does this say? Right. It's a frequency. Right. It will resonate with you. Yeah, so exactly. That's what other people need to understand. You know, if it resonates with you, that means it's for you. It's a piece of your puzzle. It's a piece of your story. It's a piece of your investigation on your mission. But if it does not resonate with you, then let it go. It does not. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that that information was not meant for you. So please keep that in mind, my friends. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge right now. Don't waste your time on stuff that's not resonating with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you haven't built that detachment, if you don't understand what detachment is, you take it on as energy. And right. that's where it becomes dangerous. You get weighed down by it. So until you learn complete detachment from the energy of something else, mm -hmm. you've got to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, well, Scotty, I got a question for you. So yeah. since you, you have the opportunity to speak to more men um, than we do in this year group, um, we, I have been told, you know, that women have a extra benefit to intuition. Um, I'm not going to disregard that or anything like this here, but with you speaking with men, do you find that they are coming about to their gifts and their abilities uh, in your conversation, in your groups? I What I'm getting is uh, the group of guys, especially that we're, there's about nine of us now and, um, you know, it's slowly building. It's been fantastic. Everyone's really enjoying it. The, the, the comment, commenting on how much they're getting out of it. Um, and you can just tell they're really, they're really opening up, you know, they're really feeling they can, they can talk about, you know, the craziness that they've experienced in their lives. And some, some guys have had some amazing stories, you know, that they would never have been able to tell people outside this sort of platform or outside our sort of group. Um, so it's really, you know, that, that's what's what I'm finding really important. And it's something that, you know, that, that really inspired me to do the same thing was because I went through the same, the same troubles and it's just, you're finding out all this information and all these truths and you've got no, no, nowhere to sort of, you know, discuss these and with like-minded people and, um, you know, really, you know, mull these ideas over with everybody. And um, I'm finding the group is really flourishing with that, you know, with that, that freedom to do so. And um, it's, 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 it's becoming really, really great thing. And everyone's looking forward to it every fortnight. Um, and we can't all get together. Some guys are busy and, and whatever we tend to get about six to seven in you know at, at a time generally um but um but yeah no i think i think this is going to be a great way for them to really start to delve in and deep and, and into their intuitive abilities and trust themselves get that confidence in their in themselves whereas you know outside that sort of that sort of platform it's going to be difficult to get that confidence and I, it took me years and years and years and years and years and years <laughs> to really build up that trust in what I was sensing and feeling and, and understanding. And 
hopefully this can do it a lot quicker for the guys and they can do it in a safe space. So I think, right. um, you know, and, and like I said, I think, you know, being able to sort of have conversations with you guys and, 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 and a lot of guys can't do that. They can't, they can't get in these sort of more feminist type, you know, feminine type energies and, and, and have discussions and, and then break them down and, and, and translate them. And, um, you know, I have, I have no issues doing that. And um, that's where I think, like I touched on before, it's a great, one of my abilities to do that and communicate, you know, be that bridge between the masculine and the feminine potentially, you know, with the group. Um, and that, that's, that's really sort of coming, you know, really coming to age right now. I can really feel that, 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 that gift coming through in these discussions. So no, it's great, Elisa. No, thanks for asking. It's really, um, really important for these guys and, and myself, you know, to do yeah. this and hopefully it'll just keep growing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that you're giving them an opportunity mm -hmm. and a group. Mm -hmm. And to come to to be able to discover their gifts amongst other men if they feel more comfortable that way. So uh, I want all of you gentlemen out there listening, this is an open door for you right here with, with Scotty. And that is a great opportunity for you to feel comfortable enough to talk about the things that you want to. So mm -hmm. thank you, Scotty. Thank Yay. you. Yes. No Thank you. Just, just, just message me on, you know, jump on the channel, message me. You know, it's the link's down below. Um, I've got a, a welcoming pin up on the, on the page. You can just get a bit of information on myself and then, you know, just, just message me if you want to join the group. It's as simple as that. And I'll, I'll log you into, we've got a personal chat going for that as well, private chat. Um, so we've got that going plus the fortnightly zoom meetings and, um, yeah, no, nah, it'd be great to hear from anybody who's in interested. Definitely. Awesome. I love it. So we're going to kind of go on to something else, but this is kind of, this is our gifts, you know, and you guys all know what all the rest of my gifts are, you know, cause we're always talking about it, but basically these are our gifts. So think about what, what's yours and how you can nourish it so that this gift can help you and more in the future. Absolutely. But we also want to talk about the financial system. It looks um, a little dire right now, which is great, actually. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that a bit and just some of the current events that are happening. And Elisa has a class she's going to be doing. So I wanted to talk about that really quick. Uh, yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to be doing a class October 7th at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to be talking about Anything and everything has to do with RV, the redemption center, the currencies, um, the humanitarian projects, and even um, MedMed. So if you have any questions, you know, you can come over there. And it's going to be a roundtable. It's going to be live. It's not going to be recorded. Um, but that, that is going to be a chance to be able to ask those questions that you were concerned about. And hopefully with uh, the knowledge that I've gained, I can give you some um, answers and some ideas on what to do and what you should be doing. So. She's very knowledgeable yes. on this. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> it comes yeah. through. Oh, yeah. And I'll, I'll end up uh, putting it up on um, my YouTube uh, channel, and uh, that way it, there'll be a link there and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. I'll put a link below. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about what's going on. We're going to be careful with our words yes but we know the vatican is about ready to pull their money mm -hmm. so this is going to be astronomical i think for the world but it has to happen and it's really good now i don't really worry too much about like the money in the bank because i know it'll come back mm -hmm. um Money really doesn't seem to be a big worry at all for me, but I did take cash out, you know, to use when the banks are closed. <laughs> so I do think that's wise if you haven't done that yet. Right. But let's just chat about that, you guys. Who wants to chime in? Well, um, I was thinking it would be good to look at the pyramid of um the city of london which is the finance side of it the city of Va the vatican city which is the religious side but interestingly obviously they've been storing wealth too wow. so that that would be interesting to look at mm -hmm. and um 
the uh oh what's it called well it's dc but the district of columbia yeah so these these are all the um corporations that over overrun the system through maritime law etc um so so in terms of those systems still being in place um, where do you see that? As we know, there are the Pope's not real. The uh, well, what's going on in London? So, uh, what's her name? Yeah. Truss. She's also under white hat. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Sleepy Mr. Joe. B, who's fake it's, as possible. Yeah, it's obviously yeah. so. <laughs> the three corners are obviously yeah under control. They're under control. But in terms of breaking down those systems, because there's obviously many, many, many layers to those systems, um, and it all has to play out in time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, where where do you so oh, starting with London and the banking? So where do you see we're at with that? I think that's why those uh, soldiers are there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has anything to do with the U and the N. Mm -hmm. at all so they're just in their that uniform because the white hats are in control of that system as well but they're there to kind of help with any big dramas that happen towards yeah. the banks and with the people mm -hmm. i feel like because it's going to be a huge shock yeah and that could be one of the first places that kind of collapses yeah, because you got an you got a while ago that well for one we're getting reports of lots of um, what they're calling migrants mm -hmm. staying in hotels, and so do you get that those all these people who are staying in hotels kind of undercover they're not in uniform, nothing like that, are they like paid? Uh, I mean I guess it could be paid militia part of the good if you know what i mean yeah i feel unfair. like there is a few bad guys in there but a lot of them are good yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean you gotta yeah. think about it. that's a pretty good plan that's actually yeah. a pretty ingenious plan so yeah 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 um yeah so i thought yeah that's definitely very interesting <laughs> yeah it is it's very interesting it made and me think the, about the risk board, you know, that, that that's a really an awesome uh, strategic plan, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Battleship. Battleship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there seems to be a lot of um, Trojan horse plans, you know, it's like, keep the system, but break it down from the inside. And, mm -hmm. and I guess that's what we're seeing with the UN that's right. under control. Yeah. Um, I guess, I guess NATO mm. and uh, yeah. WEF. I mean, that's yeah. yeah, it's all white hat. Yeah. yeah. So, it, and also interestingly, with the um, pipeline, a lot of people were getting that um, it was the the dark, the bad, that actually um, did whatever they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't particularly think that, but I don't know. What do you get? What happened? Well, with the pipeline, they're saying that that was actually really the bad. That, and this is a that few people yeah. that have said that, but um, I wasn't particularly getting that because I do think that the movie is really the movie. Uh -huh. That it's that, that, that much. It is like, the movie. I am getting it. It's the movie. I don't remember what happened to the pipeline, but I do sabotaged. know it was sabotaged. Yeah. It had two explosions yeah. and it has two leaks now. And oh, yeah. um, it's being blamed on um, Biden because Biden actually was asked, you know, what would he do about the pipeline? And he actually said he'd take care of it. And they wanted him to clarify, what do you mean by that? He said, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. So, and then next, you know, boom, it, it happens. So now, um, the story is that you know Russia is blaming um, America for sabotage. Although, yeah, Russia is, but then the MSN is blaming Putin. Yeah, yeah. And he, he did to himself, tensions are building, nonetheless. Yes. We are building. Yeah. It's every yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Well, it sounds like a very cool. Um, I don't even uh, feel like there's the, it's actually damaged. Right. It's just a, it's just a very interesting major fact that would yeah. seem like an instigating moment that could cause something major to happen. So you could look at it as like another marker, you know, like yeah. whenever the queen died. Okay, this here is another instigating moment that's going to cause tension and, and definitely everybody's watching uh, that way it, that next domino can fall, uh, you know, because everybody's so scared of a nuclear attack. So yeah. um, uh, mm -hmm. I don't see that happening. I do see that, you know, propaganda crap, you know, will probably happen, but it's going to make us, you know, again, pay attention and choose and stand fast or give in. So that's that's yeah. the whole thing of it. So. Bad, bad. Yeah. When they start doing things like that. It's a distraction. They're distracting you from the real thing. Right. Whatever. Right. Or, or they're pointing to another thing to do with that thing, which is what <laughs> popped into me. Mm -hmm. And I and I talked to you, honey, about it as the pipeline runs like yeah. exactly where the cables are. For the internet. The internet cables. Mm -hmm. Um and again, it's like, okay, well, what is underwater? Like how many people understand that our internet is mainly cabled? Right. When, when we talk about satellites and this and that, mm -hmm. it's mainly cabled and then it goes through these cell towers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many, most people think that it's all satellite. Right. And it's, and it's not. No, no, it's fed I don't from think the top and it's fed through satellite. the system and then gets shot out. So yeah. Yeah. There's not yeah. that there's not as many satellites as they say there are. Mm. I don't know how many people really think about it, actually. Yeah. No. It's like milk no, comes from don't. the grocery store. No. <laughs> you know, everybody's feeling was... the illusion that it's wireless, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. and it, and it is to a certain extent, but all of it is fed from the top down through these cables all through it and they get shot out everywhere else so mm -hmm. so how will this affect the internet then it could um cut it off between countries mm -hmm. absolutely it's just a mm -hmm. giant cable that can literally be turned off on one side or the other <laughs> yeah to me it's but amazing we, we, the, the length of the sea like they have it so the whole length of the sea mm -hmm. yeah yeah. But the new internet, how will, is that the same system? I get it'll come through the cell towers. Mm -hmm. I think they already have, they have some of these cables in the, um, the underground areas. Mm -hmm. So where the trains go, I get there's also cables in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it, it yeah. can be so switched linking. just like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's linking that connection to the cables, which then, and as we know, everything has to go to zero for it to come mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. So again, it's that, that cut and that can be blamed on whatever, mm -hmm. like, you know, someone striking someone, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it has to, everything has to go to zero. Yeah. So I, I think it's, that's the escalation, right? Mm -hmm. This is the point at which, okay, well, you guys are accusing me of this. I'm accusing you of this. Uh -huh. Well, it's back and forth until someone actually. It's kind of mirrored yeah. as well. So this is mirrored. The countries are doing this and it's like, most of it's fake, but people right. are doing this to each other. I've noticed a lot lately mm. too. Very, very wild right now. Energy. Very wild. So definitely. Yeah, major family feud. <laughs> yeah. Globally. And co-workers and just whatever. Just like yeah. everybody's yeah. having hissy fits. Yeah. It's pretty dramatic right now. But. Well, you got to shake them fleas off somehow. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, anyway. So what else? should we talk about i feel like that's like the financial system we can see it happening mm -hmm. so it could be any day yeah that it's like crashed and then has to be flipped a few days later right. yeah this, oh, the other thing that was mentioned someone mentioned if if the internet goes that's the banking doesn't mm -hmm. exist Right. And suddenly we are exactly the same as any third world country without those systems. 
right? Right. So mm-hmm. it's like you got to think about what that entails. Right. And, and that will be just, it's just a wake up and it's just a reminder and it won't go on for long. No. Right. But um, yeah, it's interesting to think of it in terms of what that then, the knock-on effect of, of that realization of how reliant we are on those systems. Mm. Right. And having faith in ourselves and each other, that things Absolutely. Can, you know, work out. Yeah. 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 Important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, encourage each other, you know, empower each other, you know, help your brother or sister, your neighbor, you know, stand their ground and, and their faith and their belief. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same as yours, but still, you know, encourage everybody to, to stay positive because that's what we need. Because mm-hmm. whenever, whenever you, uh, whenever a star is made, let me just give you an analogy. And what happens is whenever it collapses in on itself, it collapses in on absolute zero. Okay, and in that zero uh, void, in that fraction of a second, it explodes out and becomes a star. And that's exactly what we are at. We are coming down to that zero point. And when we get to that zero point, it's going to come, it's going to rebound. And whenever it rebounds, it's going to be a totally new world. So, Mm -hmm. and and just try to see it like that there, because that explains when Shanti's talking about getting down to zero. That's the whole thing is to start it over. You have to get to zero before you can rebound and come back with a massive explosion, so to speak. Yeah, brilliant. That's a nice way to think about it. Yeah. 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 And with your description of this and stuff, that leads to that violet light that you talked about. Absolutely. Yes, let's talk about that. Yeah, I was going to say, let's do that because yeah. I'm getting all these about the purple skies and all this right. kind of good stuff, you know? So, it's my sky. <laughs> yes, it's, it's your color. Yes, so what's happening is we talked about it that the 24th or around the 24th, there mm-hmm. would be this emission of frequency coming from inner earth and going around all around the toroidal field of earth. Right. And she's basically raising the frequency. Mm-hmm. So when I got this, it was, uh, you know, this was brought to me and somebody was saying, how is this going to work? And so I tuned in. And then it felt like you were going to be standing in the rainbow. So it was like in that beautiful purple light, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been seeing all that much purple. And I'm like, did it happen? I don't know if it happened. Did it happen? And then I talked to Elisa the other day. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Elisa. Um, (laughs) Well, I had gotten really busy on the 24th. And I I guess I just wasn't paying attention. But um, I, I noticed that, you know, whenever I was turning and looking at stuff and everything around it had like a purple lavender hue to it. And, and I, and it kept doing it. And here, here, my dumb ass, you know, is rubbing my eyes. What's wrong with my eyes? <laughs> and then it, it continued. And then I, it dawned on me. I was, oh my God, that's right. She had this here um, lavender pulse that, that came from her core. And, um, and I was told, you know, that it could, you know, raise the hair on your arms, on the back of your neck, you know, you can feel uh, trembles and vibrations, you know, uh, within your body, you're not going to be looking at something on the counter vibrating, you're going to be able to feel it within yourself. And, and I did notice that everything had this beautiful purple lavender hue to it. And, uh, and that is from her. And whenever she pulsed out like that, um, I have been getting uh, reports and they have been on the board too about these beautiful purple skies. It's just absolutely phenomenal. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> there it is coming out to where everybody can see it. If they couldn't see it within themselves, they had an external vision or, or view of it. And, and that was showing me that it was still continuing, which it still is. It's kind of like she put out that pulse and it's still going and it's still going. And in the, in the middle of this here, uh, little pulsations that she's doing. We're getting, you know, beautiful purple skies. We're getting people, you know, that's being challenged with their egos. You know, it's going to either make or break you people. I hate to tell you that, but that's the truth. You know, either drop the ego. Because this, this trip that we're on, this is the first trip ever in your life that doesn't require luggage, okay? Everything you need is going to be that's going to be there when you get there. You don't, need, you don't need no luggage. So this is also, you know, making people have to choose with their free will again you know, uh, uh, their choices, their faith, their belief in what they're going to do. And it's caused a lot of infighting amongst some people. And it's also causing them to, you know, uh, battle with their own egos. And so uh, I, I I don't like seeing my brothers go through this, but I also know that they have to go through it because it is their personal choice. 
you know, it, to choose to stay in your ground and in your beliefs and know that all of this stuff is coming to fruition. Okay. And I, I haven't seen any um, purple hueish things here lately, but we also have a uh, dead hurricane coming to us now. And now it's going to be a tropical storm and everything's cloudy and so forth. So I haven't seen anything um, for a couple of days. So, but other than that, it is happening, my friends, and it's going to yep. continue to happen. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lisa, to ask, um, you know, you said some people, for, I don't know where they all were that reported the purple sky. Uh -huh. So is this something that would um, like appear in some places and not necessarily be apparent in others? And yes. as, and as yeah. it ripples out, it will become more apparent because I'm yeah. you know, far away, you know, on one side of the U.S. I only and, see it in the well, south. I've been seeing it in the yeah. south. If I look south, right. that's it. Like I don't see it in the house or when I walk outside, I have to look a certain direction. During the broad, for, during broad daylight or more at sunset? It's more in the morning after the sun has come up, like just come up. Right. <clears throat> and, and here it's more in the, the sunsets, you know, in, uh, in the evening hours. So, but it, it's just been wow because I mean I have had people send me picture, pictures not just from uh, the south but from the north too. Hell, I mean, you've got pictures from Finland and uh, over and uh, well, this one chick had sent me one out, out from out in Russia, and I thought that was pretty cool. But hers was uh, a more lighter purple. Than well, if you, yeah, if you imagine uh, throwing a rock in the lake, right. you know and the ripple, you know. It's just, it takes a little longer for those ripples to, right? It's not going to be right. instantaneous. So that's what you're kind of saying. Right. Well, you also, you're in a dome. So in, in that dome, you have, you know, your atmosphere and your clouds and all this kind of good stuff. And that pulse is coming from the bottom. So whenever it's coming from the bottom, it's going to hit certain things as it's going up. In some places, it will be clear. People can see it. In other places, it will not because there's obstructions in the way. But uh, but if you pay attention, you'll be able to, to see it because it's been happening. Just wow. I'm, I'm just, you know, blown away, you know, as far away as California and even Alaska yeah, and, and South America. This is just, you know, downright phenomenal. But it seems like that the more uh, darker pictures were more, you know, towards the center of her, what we would consider the equator. But uh, I find that very interesting that if you're not in the center pocket of it, you're not going to see it as clear as others. So. And of course, when we get our, our dome complete or when the ice wall, you know, everything is completely open to us. Mm -hmm. It's that periwinkle sky that we're going to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it'll be a lighter color because we're inside the photon belt. So you have to understand it's going to be a lot of a brighter sense to it. It won't be as it'll be more lavender than purple. OK. Is it more of a diffused? Like given that we're in the dome and outside the dome, obviously this is happening outside as well. Given that it's mm -hmm. coming from the center of Earth, mm -hmm. as we you know, as we don't know it, but and we're we're encased in this dome with a lower consciousness and so forth. Is is the effect any any different on the outside of the dome? The Tartarians as opposed to us, or is it, do they see it differently? Are they getting a different effect than we are, or how, is there anything you've got on that on that brighter. idea? It's brighter yeah. out there absolutely yeah it's it's more diffused in here and mm -hmm. what i was seeing was kind of like what it is like it probably is like walking through the rainbow outside of the stone yeah mm -hmm. but i still mm -hmm. thought we were going to see more like and i don't get to pay as much attention as i would like to mm -hmm. but <laughs> i was really counting on that purple <laughs> <laughs> and i couldn't find it i was like it didn't happen <laughs> maybe you know, maybe where the dome is. all this drama. So I guess yeah. it did happen. <laughs> if you maybe. look at the hole, and it, like a, as the Taurus field, toroidal yeah. field. If you look at the hole, we're on one, and like you're saying, Elisa, you imagine that one section, the energy just coming through that. It's not a continuous. We're not getting mm. the. I mean, I guess right. it's waves, right? Because it's going to keep right. going. Yeah. So in here, it's all like, dum, dum, dum. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also look at the rainbows that, that the pictures that we've been getting of these here rainbows, you know, I mean, that perfect double rainbow around the, the sun. I mean, that was just breathtaking. And that's one of the effects of, of this here energy or this pulse that she's giving out as well. Some people will see purplish or lavender. Other people will see the rainbow colors. And th that that one particular one that we had yesterday, that was just awesome. Because then I had a question about it, you know, what could cause that effect? 
you know, it's because it's bouncing off of the ceiling of the dome. So, mm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I mean, if the, where, would it be an indicator of, like where people are seeing it and not seeing it? May, it may even be an indicator of where the dome is at its weakest or its strongest or whatever too. Maybe it's like if it's mm. you know in one spot and not in another, you right. might be seeing it more prevalent in the skies than other places, you know. Right. Um, well, the strongest effect will be what well, if you are within that center view. That's where you're yeah. going to get the strongest view and effect of it. But if you're on the corner of it or side of it or whatever, it won't mm. be as strong. Very so subtle. You know, yeah. Way absolutely. more subtle. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So what I'm getting now is that, so we're in fourth density. We've mm. hit fourth density and we hit fourth density at the end of 2021, mm. but it's been fourth density negative. So fourth density crazy. <laughs> um yeah. but now Gaia or Tara is done. She's like, <laughs> we're going into the positive. So she is changing everything mm. right now. So we're moving yeah. into fourth density positive, whether we like it or not. <laughs> and that's why all the ego is coming up now. Yes. Yeah. People basically have to get rid of all their baggage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To move forward. And the harder I am so glad that I don't even need to carry y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you can imagine for the people who have to do that all of a sudden, and then they've yeah. also physically their crystalline body or the changes that they're going through, the detoxing and all that. You mm -hmm. add all that together, it's one hot mess. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. But it's gonna be a rough ride. For so so be so easy on yourself and be easy on others. Mm. Yeah. Also, yeah. I've always I've always gotten that the frequencies really help people just let go of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily going to be like bad, bad for a long period of time because you can only exist like in that form of ego for a very short period of time when mm -hmm. frequency around you is much higher. Yeah. Right. So I don't I don't see it as being like this. It's like people will just be going through a stage, which won't, I don't think it will last very long. No, right. it won't. Oh. It's like an argument, you know, mm -hmm. that everybody makes up later. Yeah. 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 No. Usually. But it gets people to show their true colors. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something that, you know, you just can't hide these days. And I'm very, very thankful uh, for it because uh, it does. It makes people show who they truly are. and. Um, and that way you can weed out, you know, the good from the bad, you know, because we've taken off these masks here towards the end of it and everybody gets exposed for their true colors. So stand your ground, know your belief and, and love yourself and love others because that's why we're here. We're not to hate each other. We're here to help one another and be the oneness that we are and get rid of the ego because, you know, that ain't going to do nothing except cost you an arm and a leg. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess this is where the service to self people who have chosen to stay in that mm -hmm. that will be very obvious right which mm -hmm. fortunately is yeah. not a huge huge number of people but right yeah well at yeah. least our numbers are building and getting bigger and, and in the midst of this year like i was telling uh, honey people are going to be looking for more answers you know whenever you got a challenge in front of you whatever it may be good bad or different people want to look for answers they seek to, to find understanding and direction and in the midst of all of this, this is going to, you know, boom in popularity for people to look for answers. And the mm -hmm. Honey Sea Golden Channel is perfect for that. You know, there are people going to be coming and looking and, and trying to understand what's going on, what they think they should do, what's your opinion, how can they help this, you know, all of those answers. And, and I think that is really wonderful because it's going to bring so many more people back on the boat, as I call it, or bringing new people onto the boat. And then that way they can, you know, find what resonates with them. And, and it's, you know, gets rid of the bad ones and then it brings in new ones. So I, I think that's just wonderful. It's another transition of, of the people making choices. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think what's important is they'll, they'll finally understand there's also a boat to get on. You know, like a lot of people are going to be so confused. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, they're going to be thinking, you know, am I the only one in this mindset or am I going through this alone? You know, and right. I think, like you said, you know, when that people are going to be exposed to this boat, this lifeboat of, of communities, you know, like this one and the ones we're sort of creating. And I think it's going to be a, you know, uh, that's, that's really, really important for 
for, the, the, for channels like this, like you said, and, and in places where people can just go and connect and, and it won't take long. There's going to be, you know, the awakening is really going to really, you know, kick into gear now, I think. And, they, you know, they don't call an awakening for nothing. I think it's going to be big. And, you right. know, uh, it's, it's, I think this is where, you know, developing platforms like this and, and, and ones we've done with the guys and stuff like that. It's like they're, they're ready to go. You know, it's going to be, um, it'd be interesting to see how, how, how much influx comes through over the next few months or even weeks. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Acceleration. Yeah. yeah. Because the past programming has taught everyone there's no way out. Mm. Like it's all, yeah. all end of the world, you know, all the films, the environment, blah, blah, blah. So most people you talk to who are not awake don't see a way out. Mm. They just see themselves as one little tiny thing on the, on the world, which is basically going to fall apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So for that, that's a hold of your leg when you're climbing that mountain, my friends. <laughs> you know that's dead weight. Cut that line. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, it take it takes a jump for them though, because yeah. to to take right. that leap. Leap of faith. So, yeah. So I think that's what this free energy will do. Right. It will actually open up the intuition, the discernment. And suddenly they'll be able to see things in a different way. Their third eye will connect. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, their, yeah. their soul yeah. will reconnect. That's right. And that's It'll give them that ability. Mm. Yeah. 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 You know, it's the, like a tool, the truth isn't it? can be yeah. told, my brothers and sisters, mm. but it has to be realized. Mm. Yeah. You know? And that's what we're here to do yeah. is try to, to, to tell the our brothers and sisters as much truth as we can so that they can come upon their own realization. So, yeah. And I, I'm really helpful. I mean, I'm really thankful to be on this side to be able to help them participate in that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know all the answers, but yeah. at least I try to help. Yeah. So. Shanti, yeah, we're, all, we're all exploring. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Shanti, when you're making the point of the people who are going to have the hardest time, you know, they're just really not getting it and they feel hopeless and helpless. Mm-hmm. The one thing that you want, we, you know, you, to discourage them from doing it is the one thing that they're going to want to do. They're going to go drown their sorrows in, in, you know, that imbibe in the spirits, as we right. say, or do the things that don't yeah. help with the good frequencies, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. if, if they could somehow get the information that that's to go the opposite way with the things that are more positive instead of right. going to what they've always done, what they've always done. That's why they're kind of in their little dill pickle. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Breaking those loops. Yeah, breaking the loops, you know, getting off the hamster wheel and trying right. something different. And why not? Let's try something different. Why not? You know? If you've got a friend that's Absolutely. having a hard time, maybe encourage them to mm-hmm. try something a little different. You know, don't say we're going to go down to the something something pub and, you know, drown our sorrows. No. Mm. Right. You know? you gotta, well, yeah, one thing that, that, yeah, one thing, you know, when there is a huge, massive event, people do tend to come together better. They Mm -hmm. do tend to work together. So maybe that is the intent to try as as to why they have to have this major event so that people will come together before they, you know, like start at each other instead, you know? So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, Yeah, it would be so much better. To have, you know, instead of having five guys on the field out of thousands that are awake that can only help, imagine having, you know, 99 out of that 100 to actually help that are awake. That makes it a lot easier whenever the event happens, the more people you have awake, because then you got those are the ones that are, what do you want to call them, kind of like a paramedic. They're ready for all those who are not awake. They're going to triage. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 Good conversation. This is great. Very yeah, good. Yes, it is. Just think about your core. Think about yourself and how you can take care of yourself and nurture yourself so that you'll have the energy and the knowledge and faith to help each other. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But do you guys have any final things you want to say? I always do. I want to tell everybody again, remember you are everything that you see, no exceptions. Be kind to it. Beautiful. Thank you. That's great, Lisa.
yeah. I, I just wanted to bring up the um, website that I came across, but other Go than ahead. that. Um, Go ahead. So I came across the website um, and his name is Thomas Marilyn. I've forgotten wherever I put it. Um, and it's uh, called Marilyn Museum. So it's M-E-R-R-Y-L-I-N museum.com. And uh, I'll let you read the story, but basically it's a collection of uh, fairy skeletons, dragon skeletons. Um, I think there's gnome skeletons. Um, anyway, it's very magical and it's a real collection. Mm -hmm. And Honey did a little tune in to who this person is. Yeah. Um, and it was in the early, I think, uh, between like early 1900s to like 1940s, that this all happened. And then it was uncovered later on. And now there is a museum. But um, yeah, what did you get about this, this guy, Thomas Marilyn? I just got that he was amazingly old so he'd been around for a very long time hundreds and maybe a thousand years I can't remember yeah, I think you got a thousand years yeah. old wow but he was an explorer and he didn't buy into the narrative of what was going on in here mm -hmm. so he was doing his own thing and yeah. he was taking samples like that was his big thing was to take samples and explore and find out what had been going on in here and all of these beings they're going to come back to light so it'd be a great great thing to go look at that's for sure yeah, yeah. okay yeah. and he never according to anyone who met him he never aged wow so he always looked in his 40s most people said 30s 40s hmm. nice. yeah good james so, so yeah, it's it's a fascinating site to go to because it's yeah. real. And what yeah. was it called again, Shanti? Uh, Maryland Museum. Maryland Museum. It's spelled M E R R I L Y or Y L Y Y L I N. <laughs> Maryland. <laughs> like Mary and L I N. <laughs> Mary with an I. And then L Y N. Oh, L Y N. So MaryLynn.com. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. It's the other way around. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I can put it under me. Just link it below. Because yeah. I Googled it. It looks like M E R R Y L I N. Uh, wacky. <laughs> We're getting tired. <laughs> Mac a doodle. Yeah. But yeah, everybody just take care of yourselves. And Always. yeah yeah stay okay. grounded centered in heart yeah and if it's not nice just don't say it right now just that's right yeah. if you ain't got nothing yeah. nice to say don't say nothing at all yeah scroll either scroll on by, scroll by. Or... <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right thanks everybody thank you oh,